So the other flavor of spanning tree is rapid spanning tree protocol. So instead of 50 seconds, it will converge in five seconds only. And these are the different code states, right? Now, now you will see a few features of spanning tree protocol. You, you can say that now, now what happens is if I say that there is an end host over here and there is a Microsoft server providing a service called windows deployment service. What does windows deployment service do? There will be a server who has the operating system with him and he will supply this end device. This is kind of a, uh, you know, thin client. He does not have an operating system. He wants to get the operating system from the network. But once the device boots up, this switch takes 50 seconds to bring him up. If, and the DH, initially it will run the DHCP request, but the DHCP will fail. Why? Because this port takes a lot of time to boot it up. So, so how can it be prevented? If you have now, again, what is the use of running spanning tree when there is no similar device over here, right? There is no switch over here. Is it any use of running spanning tree on this link where the loop will not occur? Right? No, no use of running. So what we can do here is we can say enable configure terminal, go on that interface and we will say spanning tree port fast. What does spanning tree port fast do? But first understand port fast will only be enabled if the ports are should only be enabled if the ports are connected to a single host. If you connect hubs, switches and all that can cost cause a loop over here. Right? So port fast. See now, now what if I do now, what if I shut down this link? I say shut it down. And if I say no shut, what will happen is it will take 50 seconds, right? But instead of taking 50 seconds, this port fast will turn on this port immediately. All the states are bypassed, you can see. So, so spanning tree is not running on this port. Getting the point? This by running spanning tree port fast interface, anything interface F0 slash three spanning hyphen tree port fast. This port, when it starts, this will immediately be added to the forwarding state. I'll just show you one more time. I'll just keep add it over here and this device will take 50 seconds to boot it up. So what I'll do is I'll configure this port with spanning tree port fast. And then this port will immediately transition to the forwarding state. Let's do that again. Let's say copy and paste it on interface F zero slash four. And if I test it now interface F zero slash four, shut it down and no shut it down. What should happen? This port should immediately transit to the forwarding state. So you can say spanning tree is not running on this state, this place over here. But what if someone comes in here and attaches a cable to a switch, right? This device will detect a VPDU and no, this should not go into port fast state. Let us just do the fast forwarding. And as of now, see nothing happens on this, right? If you say, for example, if this is a switch and there is an end device connected over here, I do not want any person, any hacker who comes in here and he adds a switch and he creates a trunk link and he sees the data of all the VLANs, right? So what we can do here is we can run spanning tree port fast with spanning tree BPDU guard. What is BPDU guard? It will not receive any BPDUs over here. So you can say, let, let us do it on the command line itself. I'll just click it over here. Sorry, put it in here. Let's say configure terminal interface F zero slash four spanning tree guard or you can all see guard root is a different feature and spanning tree BPDU guard enable. So spanning tree BPDU guard enable, what will this command do? 
this will not allow BPD to see what happens now. If by mistake, this is my F0 slash 4. This is my F0 slash 4. I take a cable and put it in here. This after two seconds, this guy will send a BPDU. What will happen is this sends a BPDU on this port and spanning tree will give us an error. He will say spanning tree BPDU guard is enabled. He'll say spanning tree BPDU guard received a BPDU where the BPDU guard is enabled. So you should run port fast and spanning tree BPDU guard. together it is a recommended best practice so if you are running port fast this port fast will not have spanning tree you can say but what if this port is connected to a switch then a loop can occur and how will i come to know that there is a switch a bpdu will come in and the moment i see a bpdu i will immediately put this port into shutdown state now this is in the error disabled state so interface status will tell you that but as of now if i want to you know, I want this port to be back in the normal state. It will not be in the normal state. Why? Because this is in error disabled mode. Like yesterday, you have to say shutdown on this port and then say no shutdown to this port. So this port will again be added to the forwarding state. But if by mistake, some new person or someone purposely adds a switch over here, this switch will send out a BPDU and immediately this port will be added to a blocking state getting the point the use of port fast so that spanning tree does not run and the use of bpdu guard so that the bpdu if it is received the port will be turned off getting the point two small features spanning tree port fast and spanning tree bpdu guard if you have an uplink failure there are other features also uplink fast and there is a backbone fast also but they are in the later syllabus there are other features also there is something called udld and all but these two features are for us to understand in ccna